what I did is I started from the beginning because when I I wasn't on the bandwagon with them last year, they was really excited about it, and I just wasn't. You can kind of, you know, I mean, what is it? I don't know. <laughs> it it's odd. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is episode thirteen of Player Normal Activity. I am your host, Craig Reith. Thank you for joining me as always. And we have a special guest on this week's episode. He is a guy that a lot of you in the IDP world have seen. It's a name that you're going to know. His name is Gary Van Dyke. He is the chief IDP coordinator for Gridiron Ratings and a senior IDP analyst for the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. He hosts two different getting defensive podcasts each week revolving around the IDP. And he also is one of the hosts of the IDP Pro Players Pod, which is geared towards new IDP players. You can find him on Twitter at the IDP Tipster. Gary, thank you for joining me on the show. Thank you for having me. It's always great to get another IDP episode out here that's been offensive focused for the most part, but I think this is going to mark three in a row of the IDP, so we're, we're trying to make it come back here. Well, that's cool. I'm more excited about the whole paranormal normal thing part of this, man. This is I like this. This is cool. We can talk about IDP, of course, but this is kind of spooky. Fun to talk about something other than football with people that mm -hmm. I'm generally just talking about football with. And it's a lot of excitement as far as comments and good feedback that I've gotten. So I'm glad to keep doing these as long as people have interest and people want to come on and talk. Mm -hmm. But we're going to have to save that for the second part of the show here. We always jump into the fantasy football part of it first. And this one, I think, is going to be a little bit unique as well, because most of the people coming on have been here trying to champion a certain player, you know, someone that they're really getting behind in the next season or so. Right. And this guy is someone that there had been some hope for, and he may still turn out to have a nice season here, a nice career. But Derek Barnes, linebacker for the Lions, is the first guy that is the guy that you had picked to go over here. So mm -hmm. get just a little bit of background, because he's not a big name out there in IDP world. He was a two-star high school prospect that went to Purdue, played four years there. He played a, sort of across the linebacking position as they switched up their defense there at Purdue, but he was a linebacker, and he was a rush linebacker too. He's got a good size. He's like 6'1", 245, and he was a fourth-round pick, uh, pick 113 by the Lions in 2021. So how are you feeling about Derek Barnes heading into this season and his future on the Lions? I wish I had better news, but I got a ghost on this guy, man. It, it, it's just happening. I want everybody to be clear just on the IODP point. This is deeper. You know, you're probably not looking at Derek Barnes for anything, but there, he has been kind of labeled a sleeper or a breakout after having some appearance last year. But I'm not buying into this, and I thought I'd just share that and share why I'm not buying into that because I also think that this class is just full a full of people that are sleepers and breakouts in, you know, it's a sign of the times. It's also, you know, everybody doing their diligence in the industry to locate these guys and get them out in front of everybody. But realistically, do we really think that they're all going to hit at the same time? I don't think Derek Barnes. When you're talking about the, it seems like there's more sleepers than ever that people are finding and talking mm -hmm. about. A lot of that has to do with how the league is treating these guys too. You know, there's more people out there probably playing in that 40 to 60% of snaps as a lot of mm -hmm. these linebackers that used to be those 90% down linebackers are going the way of the dinosaur. They're just, you know, starting yeah. to go extinct here by and large. So it mm -hmm. does give more guys opportunity. And if you're in a deep league, you're going to have more guys that you can find. He did not have a bad college career by any means. He wrecked up a ton of tackles there at Purdue. You know, he mainly started three seasons. He played in 39 games total. But he had 226 tackles, 159 of those were solos, 25 tackles for a loss, 10 and a half snacks. 10 and a I half like snacks. snacks. Yeah, it could be snacks too. Who knows about that? Usually you're not eating on the field, although. You're actually lucky because I was going to do a, a Scooby snack or Scooby Doo thing. Yeah, <laughs> Scooby Doo world. But yeah, yeah. but I, I couldn't pull that off. And he got a few big plays to interceptions, pass deflections, stuff like that. And, you know, he had decent draft capital. You can find linebackers drafted all over in the NFL draft that end up mattering for IDP, but he had a good athletic score, decent draft capital, like we said, but he just didn't do a whole lot that first year on the Lions, and there wasn't a whole lot there competing with them either. No, there, there was not. You know, I mean, you had Anzalone up there, which is kind of a, kind of one of my guys last year, and then Jared Davis. I mean, he bombed out, plus he got hurt. Not that it really mattered, I don't think. 
But in the end, I just look back at what I had. What I did is I started from the beginning because when I I wasn't on the bandwagon with them last year, they was really excited about it, and I just wasn't. You know who I was excited about? I just mentioned them. Yep. I, I wasn't disappointed. I never suggested for everybody to go running after him. But going into this year, when I look at it, that he was basically an edge rusher for the first two to three years of college, and he played at Purdue. Now, Purdue's okay, folks. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big old Ohio State Big Ten fan here. It's Purdue, and he turned around and had to be switched to the middle linebacker position as their best pass rusher at the time and really excelling, basically out of need. I think it was kind of like a productive by default. When you look, I looked at multiple, multiple pre-draft reports from his rookie season, and all of them basically said the same thing. And I think that also reflects in his, what was his combine with his short 10 yard. He's a pretty powerful guy. He's a good pass rusher, but he's not really good in coverage unless he's in that long range and coming off the outside, maybe covering a tight end or something, but playing on the inside linebacker position, other than rushing, uh, he really didn't do well. And as long as that's an issue, coming out of college with one year experience of college or whatever. I'll say that three times here in a minute. Maybe then it's like, what's that? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Oh, don't yeah. do it again. Don't do it again. <laughs> All right. Either way. What was the one with the mirror? I don't care. Candy that man. One. Candy. Don't. Oh, yep. It was that one and the bloody Mary, I think was. The yeah. Other one. Yep. Right. Right. But back on him. I don't trust it. I don't think that his poor score from last year, of course, he was like, I think it was like the third lowest score in the NFL. The only one that was on the lines with Jared Davis was lower than he was. Then you had Andals alone was just like five more. Uh, the rest of the guys on this roster right now, you know, you got Chris Board. He's actually the best graded coverage guy coming in there. Uh, I think even maybe the overall, except for Josh Woods, who got a little bit of a sample last year, that grade based off of that is, it, it's kind of a reach. So I do like Josh Woods. And then we got that rookie that a lot of people are saying they're flashing at OTAs. Let's see what he looks like when he gets on there, but I'm ghosting Barnes. I'm not, I can pick out 20 other sleepers that I would feel a lot more secure about because they're locked in right now. than I would to a guy that's going to be walking into camp. It might come out of there just being a two down thumper. And if they're smart, you can see it by his PFF grades, at least, that the only thing he excelled at as a inside linebacker last year was pass rushing, believe it or yeah. not. So maybe you keep him in some packages on third. Maybe you get him after the ball. But at this point, you know, it looks like a it looks like a rotation, and it looks like Anzalone's going to be the guy again. Uh, I'm sorry, but it looks like he's going to be the guy and. You never know the emergence of the third person yet. I could see board if the rookie doesn't work, work out so well. I could see board being on there. That that's a what was it like a twenty one for him in coverage? It's, it's because seven six yeah, which he excelled at in college as an edge rusher. He didn't do so well as an inside linebacker that from what I remember. But he was doing it well as an edge rusher when he was as a pass rusher. Now it speaks. You got twenty yards to. Judge the judge it, or you got ten yards inside, or you got to get those little running backs. You know, it's I think it's a little different ball game. So I'm not buying. Yeah, and unfortunately, he doesn't just have the size. You know, with the line sort of going back to more of that four three defense with those defensive ends that they've taken, he isn't going to be big enough. And you know, the competition at defensive end now has just drastically gone up with the guys that they drafted. So he doesn't have the size. There's more competition there. He's right. probably not going to pan out as a end guy you know like you said people and teams play these right. hybrid defenses so he can probably rush the passer from somewhere else but it's going to be interesting to see if they even try to put him on the field to start the season because you know it was a fourth round pick there was a lot of talk yeah, about him which the which season, they reached but... for some people considered that they reached for him too they did have to move up i mean i know that he had he it depends where you were getting your your draft grade from I seen him as low as, as a, a sixth in one of them. I can't remember if it was on Yahoo or who it was, but either way, it's, you know, and when I'm knocking on him, I do think he's going to get the snaps. I mean, he's going to be a second down. 
a two down guy at least probably stopping to run i think eventually maybe as soon as the start of the season but that's not going to be a big enough portion to technically make this big hoopla that he's breaking out this is deeper formats this is people that are reaching for a fourth starter depth guy <laughs> that might have some upside but he was outplayed by reeves maybe last year which is not there anymore but yeah. it's the way it is stacked i just can't endorse it makes me really wonder if there's going to be anyone for idp purposes in most leagues that you know there's going to be any real need to roster on these Who, lines linebackers whoever it is i believe we've seen the ceiling last year just because of how they use the use them and how they're going to have to use this class or this group we've seen it it's anzalone ceiling that's the same ceiling one of these guys are going to probably have this year and Right now, I think the Angelo probably will end up with it. Yeah, they got a good six guys, and anyone can make your case for a couple of them because some of them have really good athletic profiles and just really haven't panned out. You mentioned Woods was like a seventh round pick or something last year that even had a couple of nice spots, but really didn't show a ton to end up being a starter, probably. Mm -hmm. And then Malcolm Rodriguez is the guy that you mentioned. He's undersized, but he was productive in college for a big program there at Oklahoma State. So I'm sure that they'll give him a shot, but it's also not like he was a third round pick or something. He was a sixth round pick in this last year's draft class. So it's not like you're going and expecting a ton out of him either. Jared Davis was a first round pick and he's ghosting yes. up behind Barnes from last year. <laughs> uh, Maybe this will be when Jared Davis finally breaks out for the Lions. Uh, the I'm not biting that one either. <laughs> I'm not going near there, man. No, that would scare I'm, me off. I'm over here on lines this year man i'm gonna hopefully we're gonna see that uh, pass rush of theirs you know really kick in and stuff and including maybe barnes i mean if he, he you can see it in the numbers it, if the guy's doing one thing particularly well that's what you should be using him as they're transitioning a guy that's reportedly short shuffles and his instincts direction inside linebacker just has to be developed yet and I don't think he was actually blistering fast in the 40 either. He might have been quick off the edge in college, but I'm not quite sure that he's a killer on the field. Yeah, he ended up having like a, a good sort of rating for speed overall. Yeah. So, you know, he's just like fine. He's a strong guy and he's explosive, which would make sense with when you're seeing that on him. Seeing him do that in college as a pass rusher and what you saw a little bit of in the NFL, it was his best grade overall. It was like a... 65.3 which isn't bad for a rookie linebacker that's rushing the passer but it does sort of indicate like you know maybe that is going to cap his ceiling on what he does when your coverage is in the 20s and your tackle run defense i think it was 30 or so like yeah 53. you gotta put the you gotta put the strengths in there for the kid i mean he's playing out of position a little bit and he's learning the curve i you know just not yet folks not yet and by the time he really develops or by the time they start really getting to a position in detroit that they're going to invest in some real stock and some linebackers as we see that they're, they're i'm not cracking on him he was reportedly a real well well rounded player character and that is really what the Lions have been going for, yeah. either in the draft or in free agency. And that's exactly what they've done. It doesn't necessarily mean that they reached for their future inside linebacker last year. It means they reached for a guy that they wanted and also was an ace on special teams. Well, let's only buy into that stock so much this year. Give them, no, give them, not give every them some good time. NFL. Sorry. Nope. Go right ahead. Not, not every good NFL player in one aspect or another ends up mattering to us for fantasy football. And that's sometimes mm -hmm. what we got to remember. Like the coaching staff can love him. He can be a great locker room guy that gives forth effort, great on special teams. I uh, mean, there were all, value there were, on that, you know? Right. And there were more. Jamin Davis, he didn't succeed last year. Well, we only had two rookies in the whole entire top 64 in balanced formats, at least the balanced scoring that I checked, ours and a few others. There was only two of them, Bolton and what was the other rookie? There was one other rookie that had a Parsons. good season. I'm sorry? Parsons. Oh, yeah. How did I forget about him? Jeez. Man, it's how did right. I forget it's about the end of Parsons? The day but yeah, I mean, you think about how many linebackers were taken, how many were taken early. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of them, and everyone goes into the season thinking, oh, this is going to be great. And Ernest Jones. Rookies don't do a ton. 
right? I mean, JOK showed up when he got healthy towards the end of the season. He showed a lot of promise. Right. Oh, yeah, that's that sort of what little... you're hoping for right. with a lot of these rookies. Is that hey, show me that flash of what you can do going forward to give us a little hope. And then having a bad first year doesn't mean anything. Going to the right. offensive side, Peyton Manning had a terrible first year, and I know it's not saying anyone else is going to be Peyton Manning, but yeah, a bad Terry first year doesn't ruin not... you. But right, it's... right. You like to see something that you can hang your hat on. We held out hope for Jared Davis for a long time, too. But yep. <laughs> Same not, thing with not, Angel alone, who's still there. And not sorry, now. Mr. Barnes. Sorry. I do wish him well this year. I do wish him well. I just don't think he's just ready this year. And I'm not sure that by the time that he is ready that they hadn't moved on. Well, and if he does end up having a great year, you'll hear us, Gary and I, on Tuesdays on the Getting Defensive IDP show, mm -hmm. uh, Eating Some Crow. Um Probably in a happy manner that he ended up showing up and doing well. Hmm. But yeah, that's our take here on Derek Barnes. We're going to move from the football field to the 40 in. But before we do that, I want to thank everyone for watching this as always over on YouTube, whether it's the premiere or after the fact. I'm sure you already are, but make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on so you know when these go live on Fridays at 12 Eastern. And hit the thumbs up, leave us a comment if you like this. Let us know what you think about Derek Barnes, if you think we're totally off base. Or if you're like Gary and you're going to be ghosting them this year. And speaking of ghosts, Gary's going to be talking about a famous haunted place that he went to visit, actually. Mm -hmm. The Waverly Hills Sanatorium. And I believe it's in Louisville, right? Yes, yes, Louisville, Kentucky. So when did you go to see this? All right, so th this is going to blow our minds a little bit because we've been talking about this. But actually, tomorrow makes 16 years to the day that I was there. Oh, wow. my, my wife figured it out. She actually said she kind of noticed it when we brought this up. I was thinking about doing this and she looked and thought it was close to it, but she, yeah, she actually looked, I got a whole photo album. This is part of that. This is part of a honeymoon trip of all things, but we had already been together since 99. This was uh, more of a weekend getaway, four day weekend, you know, at the time we had, uh, Timothy, which he's my 21 year old or getting ready to be 21. He was five at the time or something. So we this didn't... is a, an exterior shot of Waverly yes. Hills. Yes. And uh, you had said there was a, where was the location about here when you were uh, in here and where these photos we're going to look at? Let's see up there at the top of the building, you see the kind of a tower, then off to the right and left of each, you kind of see an addition or white kind of wood rooms actually they yep. also have, so we were i think on the one on the left but i'm not 100 percent sure this was like at two o'clock in the morning or something when we were there we took a few pictures all through our tour which we i think that they had mentioned that we was going to have access to about 80 percent of it at the time and we had two pictures that didn't come out well and are kind of fuzzy looking had little things in them both of them have happened in the same place upstairs didn't happen anywhere else in the building it was a really really interesting tour i hate to turn this into a waverly hills promo but if you all get the chance to you know get down there it was a reasonably price they got a death tunnel uh, i suppose it's still going this was 16 years ago they had prom you know talked about doing other things but they got i think they even have day tours but the uh, night tours were pretty cool you try to get the smaller individual ones because if you go with the bigger ones, you do have these girls in the background going, ha ah! <laughs> and, and you kind of, you get a chance to separate a little bit, but you know, we just had the unfortunate of having some teeny boppers that they must've, their mommies and daddies must've bought all four or five of them a ticket and didn't come with them. So it was, you just went the opposite direction of them, but either way, it was a great time. It was a great time. Going to walk down a hallway. He asked for volunteers and those girls have been just like, me, 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 you know, you couldn't get away. You couldn't be quiet and go, shh, what, would you hear that? You couldn't do that because you knew what you, you heard those damn girls. So it didn't matter. But either way, the guy stood there and he got the group together. We're looking down one of those long corridors and he said, well, this is where the shadow people are. You know, we need a volunteer to walk straight down the middle there and without a flashlight, without your camera. And go down there and go down there about 50 yards and stand and put your arms out. And he said, we'll be able to see your silhouette and everybody will be able to see the ghost people walking around. All right. So, oh man, how cool. Get me away from the girls. Sounded exciting. 
left my wife standing there. He told me to go ahead. I was the only one, I think, put my hand up. But I walked down through there and stuff. And he's told me to stop, turn around, put my arms out to the side. And you could hear them. They're all like, oh, yeah, I see them. You can see them. They're right there. Look, they're right by his hands, his fingers. You know, I'm turning my head slow. I ain't seeing nothing at all i'm disappointed i'm like well this sucks i should have stayed up there i get back up here my wife though she said she was squinting her ass off and she couldn't see quite see anything but some other people apparently did is this something that you guys had known about for a long time and wanted to do for a long time or just something that you, you heard about randomly and just decided to go do on that little sort of vacation type of thing it's something that we had talked about previous to getting married in the first part of a relationship when we got together in 99 uh i don't know if you remember the whole 2000 the white 2k yeah yeah that yeah, 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 yeah the boo it, it didn't happen did it but either way it it that was going on and stuff and we kind of just kind of chilled and i started watching i think it was around that time we started watching ghost hunters you know, and it just got really interesting. I think one of my first episodes of watching Ghost Hunters on TV was they had this tower and they'd been watching this rocking chair in the top of the tower and had a camera on it the whole time, you know. Well, when they went back to review, you could clearly see that rocking chair all by itself start rock. I was hooked. I was hooked because I was yep. already hooked as a teenager. We used to like going into I lived out in the country, folks. We'd go to old abandoned farm homes and barns and stuff like that to check things out kind of like that and maybe do things we weren't supposed to be doing that the spirits would have. Well, the spirits were good, actually. I can't complain about the spirits. They were tasty. But either yeah. way, but either way, you know, it's, it was a really cool experience. And, and if anybody ever gets a chance, and if you go down near in Louisville, folks, if you ever get the chance and you like fish, they have a restaurant in Louisville called Moby Dick's. It looks kind of like a white castle, but instead they got a big blue whale on it. Great food. Really good. And uh, you had said, so this is one of the pictures you sent me that you had taken. You said most of the pictures turned out, but a couple of them, for some reason, just had something to Actually, go just, with them. Yeah, we went through a roll or so, roll or more. Like, I get the photo album somewhere, but out of all of those, and we had a fairly decent uh, new digital camera if i remember right so it shouldn't have been a problem but th there was only two and this is the inside of that building that we talked about earlier and uh, you can kind of you know i mean what is it i don't know <laughs> it it's odd i mean you could call that a mist you could see a kind of an orb in the middle but is it and i'm pretty sure i'm not exactly sh remembering Oh, I wish I would have had another shot, but the kind of a red thing up there towards the, the left there, right below the window, right? I'm not 100% yep. sure. That didn't look anything like the rest of the graffiti around. The graffiti is kind of standing out comparably to the whatever the hell that is, right? Yeah. So we don't know. We didn't see it until a couple of weeks later. And uh, I know you said you didn't really have anything yourself. I mean, other than... The people that said they, when you went, walked down the right. tunnel and they saw right. the stuff around you, like, did your wife see or feel anything while she was there? Notice anything weird either? Yeah, she was feeling pretty irritated about those girls. <laughs> nothing, nothing, outside, no. nothing paranormal no. anyway. Yeah, no. yeah. No. Nope, no, nope, no, nope. unfortunately not. It was a fun time and I'd do it again because I do want to see something because. I mean, there's surely other things out there. You have all kinds of, I'm not saying I'm a full-fledged alien believer and all that, but I don't doubt it. I mean, it's not good. I'm not going to sit here and go, are you shitting me? Yeah. Are you shitting me? They really did five, find Bigfoot <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. So uh, just to give us a, a little bit of background for people that didn't know, I probably should have done this at the top, but uh, so Waverly Hills was a sanatorium. It started off as a hospital with 40 or 50 tuberculosis patients. And then uh, they had a big outbreak um, and it became just a big housing unit. They built onto it more and more and ended up closing as a hospital in 1961. Yeah, it was because, uh, uh, to, 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 tuberculosis. That's where they went yep. to die. That's those buildings that are the rooms at the top. I remember in the tour, that was actually where they had to put the worst cases because that's where the fresh air was that's why this whole thing was built and it was built with these huge windows so they let the air through so the people that couldn't breathe could breathe back in those days when it was a tuberculosis and then it 
I think it was an asylum. Insane asylum? No, I can't remember that part. Maybe I don't think this a, one was. I, think, I mean, there, there were probably talks about it turning into it because it like was a medical services building mm, after someone bought it, yeah. wanted to make it a prison, mm -hmm. and there's all sorts of that stuff. They tried to restore it, but you can imagine how much money it would have cost to do that for a building that size and make it livable anymore. So it, it sounds like they're just doing tours and that sort of stuff at this point. Like. It, I won't say a tourist trap because it's super cool. Yeah. And uh, you know, people, the ghost hunter shows, all the big ones have gone there and done their oh, overnights. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you can probably find those online to watch too and, and see more of. But yeah, this is one of the big names as far as those big places where there was a lot of death and suffering and that sort of yeah. stuff that, that you hear about. Um, so I, I was really happy. I can't even well. remember how she came up with the name. I mean, she probably looked it up on the internet or something, probably. I mean, I imagine 16 years ago, there was still a smartphone, right? So, yeah, I imagine she just probably looked it up. I'm not 100% sure how we ended up here. That picture there, I mean, it, again, this is the other picture that come into a blur. It's on the outside of that same room. And, again, we have that kind of weird red, whatever. I don't know. A smoky. You know, I wish I had, I should have gave you some samples, but folks, if you don't believe me, if you don't think, if you think I'm pulling your leg, I can tell you this, I am not. Yeah. I mean, who, who knows? Like I said, I, I, I do believe there's something to energy, positive energy, mm -hmm. negative energy, especially like in, in places where traumatic events or, mm -hmm. you know, really happy events, you know, would happen regularly. So if there is anything like that, I, certainly one of these places where, Plenty of people died and suffered and who right. knows what else misery. went on there. Yep. Misery. Lots and lots of misery for lots and lots of years, right? Uh, I yep. want to go up to, we got one here in Ohio called up there, Mansfield, the old yep. Mansfield prison. My son's actually been there. Believe it or not, they stopped there on his senior trip to go to Washington, D.C. That's know. awesome. Yeah. Well, they went during the day, so it was like a tour, but they didn't, not the ghost tour. He did bring home a glass for the wife. Yeah, she was kind of excited about it. Like I said, we, we've we been watching him. I just kind of recently over the last few years have not been watching him as much. You can only so many EPPs and all that. Yeah. Uh, I keep watching for that one where, uh, you know, hey, look, or something to secure something. I don't know how that'll ever happen. How do you ever really prove there is a ghost? These days, I don't know, because, you know, unless it happens to you and you experience it with people's ability to alter videos and alter mm -hmm. photos and all that stuff, it, it's so much harder to right. have any clue of what's right. real and what isn't. And that's why even, you know, different topic, but why that Bigfoot video, you know, the Patterson Gimlin film from back in you know, the 60s, right. I think it was the 60s, has that's gone right. on for so long because people couldn't do that stuff. Like you, they could literally tell right. from the film, no, no one messed with this. Right. It's either the real thing. Or right. someone walking around in the best suit that's never become close right. to being replicated. So that, one that or the other. Right. Hollywood hadn't even made that yet. Hollywood's still looking like a regular uh, a gorilla with a mocked up head looking thing on it. If they ever, I don't even know if they were making movies about Bigfoot back when that. Tell you the truth. Yeah, I think they the, the idea was out there about, you know, the abominable uh, uh, snowman and stuff like uh, that. But yeah. I don't know how much mainstream yeah. the idea of that being in America yeah. existed but yeah either way too right. much of this stuff people can mess with these days and that's why mm -hmm. i have a hard time when people say oh look at this new video from inside this library and it's like right. so clearly what you think would be a ghost I'd like to believe you but who knows right. what you've done with that video and that's oh. why i brought those pictures on like i did it's just weird right it's yeah kind of weird only two pictures in the bunch that didn't come out clear and had that funny ass looking shit on it maybe i had my finger over the flash or something now, who knows but I, yeah. I appreciate you bringing those and oh, sending me the fun. photos to share and talk about it it's always fun just to hear about those experiences and what those places are like i haven't been to a whole lot of that myself but maybe when the kids get older if they get interested in some of that and a big bonus you reminded me that it was my anniversary because i forgot so if she hadn't brought it up because this was going on i've been standing here tomorrow i gotta really set my phone for this stuff <laughs> my wife kicked my ass gotta get that added to your calendar that way right getting yeah i should time. after all this time been with her since 99. set the alert to like a week ahead of time though that way you remember not the day of and you're waking up right. like oh crap now what do i do
Yeah. But Gary, thanks again for coming on. And uh, you know, before we finish it, let everyone know where they can find you and all of your stuff. Mainly find me over at gridarmratings.com. I'm like as you mentioned, I'm the chief IDP content guy. I got articles over there. Definitely check out my tipsters page and the pull down of the IDP menu. You'll see samples of my start sit charts that cover all 32 teams. We're getting ready to fire those up like really soon. I'm talking in the next few weeks or so. And I start getting out that first week information, but there's a working examples on there of last year. And there's examples of my rolling waiver wires, which I believe is a first two. Anyways, then you can also catch me over at this SGPN fantasy on Twitter, at least to try that one podcast. And I'm sorry, folks, I just got a brand new gig. So I haven't like got these things stuck in my head at gambling podcast is an, um, putting out an IDP pro player pod for them just actually started today, uh, released it today to them anyway. So yeah, basically you can catch me on Twitter at, at the IDP tipster and either one of those sites, all my information's there. All right. Thanks again for coming on and thanks for viewing everyone as usual. We appreciate you having here and make sure you come back for the next one. And remember whether you're interested in Derek Barnes or the dog man, you're going to end up having you covered here on player normal activity. Thanks. And I'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you'd like more great fantasy football content like this, please click the link down below here.